time I drive that, I realize how much superior that is. That is, I think that may be the, I hate to say it because I'm Italian, but that may be better to drive than the Ferraris. <laughs> it really is outstanding. It is just, it's just <laughs> all the Brits are screaming at me. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that car, you, you just touch the brakes and it wants to stop. You don't have to plan your stop. Whenever you feel like it's time to stop, you touch the brakes. The, the brakes are superior, it's smoother. I, I just, every time I get into it, I realize how much better it is than the others. You know, you don't, it shifts well, the, the rear doesn't get away from you. It's just a wonderful car. And you can see why they were dominant in road racing in the mid 50s. Uh Uh, this car that you see here is what was called a customer car. A customer car, again, they made actually more D-types than C-types somewhere in the 70s. Um, and they were, make, they were very successful until a fire at the Jaguar factory stopped the production. And uh, they took many of these cars, at least maybe 20, and converted them into roadsters with a windshield and a top. Be and they eliminated, of course, the headrest because... Now, the, the, after the fire, they had kind of lost interest in sports car racing of this type. But anyway, these cars were dominant in, in, the, um, in 56, 57, and, and were superb in every way. Just a sea change of, of design and copied by many other cars. So what you're looking at is monocoque. Now you have over 300 horsepower. You still have 3.42. Uh, but now it's modified to get even more horsepower, a, a fabulous car in every way, and to, to many people, the best driver of the mid-50s cars. So we're going to see how that compares. Listen to the sound and see how that compares with, uh, with what you, you heard, because it's a much more civilized car in every way. It, the, what you'll notice, as soon as you tap the brakes, the car stops. There's no anticipation of it stopping. It just stops. of their time. Um, road racing in Europe was every bit as popular as NASCAR is here in America, so it was a big deal. In 1954, a Ferrari 375 uh, MM, just like we have in the collection, won. But in 1955, we won again with the Jaguar. They developed now a much more superior car to the C-type, which was the D-type. And the D-type here you can see is a dramatic evolution in just a couple of years over the C-type. The, the, this is really these, the difference between these two cars is a turning point because despite the fact that the engine is almost identical, this engine, however, uh, it produces about 50 more horsepower than the C-type. It's over 300 horsepower now. But the car is totally different. That car has a tubular frame. This car has a monocoque, which was a an interesting concept. Basically, from here to here, you have what we would consider the chassis, the identity of the car. But it's not a tubular chassis that runs from front to back. There, there are arms here on which you hang what we call the corners, the independent suspension portions of the car. And then the motor sits in the middle. This is all stressed uh, metal. And back here, you have now a DD on rear, sw uh, separate swing axles. Cars are also dramatically different because all of these cars had disc brakes. 
they were the first cars to have disc brakes, although the experimentally, the last uh, half of the series of C-types started with girling disc brakes, but all of the D-types had disc brakes. And because of the brakes, probably more so than, than anything else, the C-type, the D-type was victorious at Le Mans in 56, uh, 57, and I think, no, 56 and 57. And the main thing was the braking. The disc brakes were so efficient, they didn't heat up, that they could beat the more powerful cars in the corners, although the Ferraris that they were racing against were really faster in many ways on the straights. Many of you who are familiar with the C-Type will see the special versions that were made with Le Mans because they had a fin here. They were going down the Le Mans uh, straight, uh, which was a, which was a, a, a almost, a, a, depending on how the course was laid out between 1.7 and 3 miles straight. They were going down what's called the Molson Strait, and they would, when they were experimented, they would wiggle a little bit, so they put this large fin, which would go across there, to uh, stabilize it for the Le Mans cars. Uh, this car that you see here is what was called a customer car. 